Okay, uh, my name is Jan Blunk. I'm uh, currently working as a technology architect um, for L3 maintenance security department in Novell. So I'm responsible for um, the open source and the um, enterprise products. And I will talk about application crash reporting. Um, so actually, what is this all about? This is uh, it's all about bugs and finding bugs, and um, that is actually um, a copy of the logbook. Uh, where yeah, it's it's this story that the the first bug uh, was found, and uh, it was actually uh, a moth inside of a, 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 a capture in a relay or something uh, from uh, one of the very old computers. So and during that time, people wrote down logbooks um, for their computer and what they were doing and what problems they were finding. So nowadays, uh, at least I don't know anybody who's writing a logbook for his own computer. Um, and most people don't even read their, their message, Valog messages stuff or so, or at least not, not uh, usually. Um, and most of the application crash report, uh, most of the application crashes are not locked to to uh, to somewhere in the system. So um, most of the time, we don't even write out core files. Um, so the the user usually don't don't realizes that uh, that the application has a problem and is sacrificing or or whatever. So um, what does the other have? The others. Like Microsoft, they have uh, Windows error reporting service. Um, this is, uh, I think, it's existing since uh, Windows XP. It was the first, uh, the first release that they uh, included that. Uh, it's also available for ISVs. So for um, f uh, you can re register um, in the uh, WinQual. Uh, project, and the only thing that you need is to you have a you need to have a valid Ver Verizon um, certificate. Um, but uh, on the other side, so so the the program itself is actually uh, free even uh, um, for for on Windows for ISVs. So, and uh, the Windows error reporting is um, collecting um, certain. Oops certain um, information about uh, about the application itself uh, as far as I know it, it saves the um, uh, uh, the a core file and it's uploaded to a server so um, Mac has it as well they they have uh, also a problem reporter um, as far as I, I, I could not really find out if if this is also available for um, for other companies uh, or for ISVs on Mac, I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm not sure. Um, even the the iPhone has it. So um, if you if you uh, put your iPhone um, um, and connect it with iTunes automatically, um, application the the crash reports are downloaded from the iPhone and sent to Apple um, to analyze the bugs. And um, yeah, they do it also system-wide, so you can um, you can also see the the kernel problems in the in the uh, in the crash reports there. And even Sun has it. So uh, actually, I didn't find a, a really good picture of a Solaris brand, so I choose the Solarium. Um, and they are cheating. Because they use D-Trace for it, we could use System Tab as well for generating this this report, but uh, actually we, we don't do. So, what does Linux have? Um, thanks to Ubuntu, we have Upport. It's an application crash reporting uh, system, which is uh, actually kernel based um, or kernel supported. We're running in user space, and that's Upward was ported to Fedora, so it's also available on Fedora. And um, uh, thanks to Google, um, 
who they, they have this Google Summer of Code project, and a student was interested in importing Apart to OpenSUSE as well. So now we have um, application crash reporting uh, since 11.1 .1 as well. So what is Apart doing? Um, Apart is basically a collection of, of, uh, of Python code uh, which is called automatically by the kernel during the application crash. So instead of writing out the core file to disk, it's um, calling this, this application, and the application is then collecting information about the, the application crash. Um, it, kept, it gathers potentially useful information about the process environment and the operating system. So uh, since it's yeah, I, I will go uh, into more detail later. Since it's it's a it's a two-step uh, process, the first step is uh, very similar to um, just get the dump, uh, get proc maps, get all your your uh, information that you cannot gather later. Uh, but all the information about the process um, environment, get it now and write it out, uh, write it out to disk. And um, when the when the user is notified, um, then you can collect additional information. So yeah, it's a uh, it runs in multiple steps. So um, it notifies the user by um, by a small applet. Um, there is an applet available for Qt for and. Uh, there is an applet available for GTK, um, or written in GTK, uh, both written in Python as well. Um, so actually, what the what the applets are doing, it's very simple. They are they are just watching um, uh, or putting a notify on the directory where the the crash reports are stored from from the application, and uh, then then you get a pop up and uh, and then you can do uh, the additional stuff. So and optionally. Um, the applets support you to to send the crash report to the developer. So at the moment, um, we only have one central server, uh, uh, but it's it's. Uh, uh, I will go into uh, more detail later. Um, it, it is possible to support multiple servers, so to have uh, one OpenSUSE server and one Firefox server and uh, one server for, uh, you know, for GTK or something, and, uh, and to upload the, the reports uh, into different uh, databases. So how does it look like? Uh, the, this is the GTK applet because uh, I'm one of the uh, very few persons actually uh, inside who's uh, using G uh, GNOME, and most of the people use KDE, but yeah. I uh, uh, um, use that one. So uh, here you can see it's um, it's a the application's only purpose is to segfold. So um, then uh, you get this pop up, this notification. You can uh, press um, uh, uh, report the problem, and then you can send it, or you can you can um, have a look in in um, the contents of the report. So the report itself looks like like this. It's just a a plain text file. Here you can see it's the it's just the output of proc maps. So this was a compass crash. And it's uh, the the reports are structured like that, so it's a key value uh, thing. List is command line, distro release. So this is all information that you can gather afterwards. Uh, the proc environment, so which path uh, was was uh, active at that moment, and uh, and this is the core file. And here's even more information. Uh, build IDs and uh, load addresses of the shared objects that were loaded during that time, package dependencies, which files were modified in the package dependencies. So th that is quite interesting uh, sometimes to see 
uh, because you can rule out certain stuff uh, um, uh, just by looking at this that list if uh, something was modified. So, um, yeah, very long list. And then it dumps out uh, information from GDB, the stack trace, um, stack trace top, which is actually um, the, the five uh, topmost frames, and uh, the thread is stack trace. So, yeah. Um, So, <coughs> so what happens with the reports? As I said, we have a crash database server. Um, at the moment, we have only support for OpenSUSE, um, so no enterprise products and uh, uh, or such things. Only for OpenSUSE and only starting with 11.01, um, due to different other reasons. Uh, you can find the, the crash database server at crashdbopensus.org. Um, um, yeah, as I said, application-specific servers are also possible. I have the local version of the database. Uh, I have it here. Um, this is how it looks like. So it's I try to integrate it into into the the uh, common OpenSUSE website look and feel. Um, you can. You can search for for um, spe specific reports. So uh, all reports from 11.01. There's actually because I don't don't use factory yet. Otherwise, you would see uh, a few things here. And uh, then you can see that was the the report that we looked at just just now. Um, uh, at at uh, on on disk here. And this is how it looks like when it's uploaded. It gets you. Uh, UUID, you can see when the crash happened and when, when it was uploaded. And here you can see that uh, the core dump itself is removed. So, oh no, here it is. Oh, so that's a bug. <laughs> but usually it should uh, uh, be removed. So I think the others, yeah, the others don't have a, a core dump. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, this is how it looks like. Free text search is also available, so you can search for specific words in the in uh, in the application crashes. So, um, what is missing, or what I'm working on at the moment, is um, the further processing of crash reports. So, um, it would be uh, ideal if uh, if one person sends a, a crash report uh, that you can automatically detect duplicates of the crash report and connect them together. So um, actually, I, I want to uh, gather all the reports, so I don't want to prevent uh, the uploading. But on the database, uh, it's easier if you look at the reports if you have the duplicates as well. Um, so uh, what uh, on, on the roadmap, there's also searching for available fixes or workarounds. So um, to, to add a feedback channel uh, to say, oh, yeah, your problem is fixed with uh, maintenance updates, blah, 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 something like that. Um, and searching for regressions. So uh, this would also be interesting to have a regression uh, detection. So if, if the backtrace actually uh, is found and the, the, the database server uh, thinks that the, the bug is already fixed in a specific version, and then the, the bug uh, shows up in a, in a later maintenance update again, so that you can automate, yeah. Happens if my if my application crashes, I click on send the report, but I do not have internet access at the moment. Is it stored or is it lost? Yeah, it's it's stored. It's saved uh, under a var crash, and uh, then you can send it later. At the moment, there's not. It's not. You have to to uh, run it uh, from the command line then and give it the full path. So upward uh, command line interface minus C and then the the report file. Um, yeah. 
would it be possible also not to send the core but only the back traces because some people may not want to have the memory of the process sent yeah so um, the I don't know why the uh, th this happened here uh, probably because I uploaded the crash report with cool um, but the the uh, normal applet is removing uh, the the core dump and is doing I, I have a page on that as well oh um, and is uh, um, is also anonymizing the reports. So um, it's not only the core file that that might uh, uh, contain um, sensitive information, but it's also usernames and such things. So. Uh, the the account name and the Gcos fields are replaced uh, by uh, username, just that's just the string username. So um, and this, uh, the the current working directory is also removed from uh, slash proc uh, because this is uh, information which is not uh, um, yeah most of the people don't want to uh, send, but nevertheless y you the user always have the possibility to review the report before it's getting sent and he should really do that because uh, I think in certain situations you just don't want to automatically send the report. Yeah. Hi, um, so you generate the backtrace on the client side, do you have full debug, if debug info available when doing that? Uh, no, but um, this is uh, one reason why we only have it since 11.1 because uh, I I enabled build IDs for OpenSUSE as well, um, and that was not enough for generating um, backtraces. You need to have unwind info, uh, so we built uh, everything with uh, asynchronous unwind tables, uh, and we don't strip the unwind tables. So, um, actually, for C plus uh, or all applications that supported exceptions. Uh, or the, the, where the programming language uh, uh, supported exceptions, uh, it was necessary to, to build that as well. For all applications that don't support exceptions, uh, the asynchronous unwind tables are usually quite small, so it, it's not bloating up your, your uh, application binary. And um, so it was. I think it was roughly like five percent or so, uh, which uh, the, the distribution uh, was getting bigger. But that was only a problem uh, for for the live CDs and and not for the DVDs. So there was uh, enough space available. And what we do um, is uh, uh, you could retrace a report as well without the call. So I'm. Um, I'm actually uh, I'm, I'm I'm parsing the report, and I can can extract the addresses from the stack trace, and I can look up the correct symbol information from the debug info files. This uh, application exists; it's all written in Python as well, um, as as uh, as uh, Upport itself, and. Um, the the problem is we uh, to to get the debug info uh, uh, data about the build IDs out into a database, and um, so that that is missing actually at the moment, and uh, the uploading of the retraced uh, backtrace to the server, which is also not implemented yet. Um, this is due to the reason because uh, that that we created our own server. So. Um, I don't know. So um, I have a second question, if you will. Huh? Uh, you you are you are you've created a separate crashdb.opensuse.org rather than using the bug tracker. So yeah. are you going to end up with a parallel bug tracker where people have to check two places? Uh, the thing is, uh, due to internal uh, political <laughs> uh, <clump> complexity, <laughs> uh, um, the idea of extending Bugzilla in that way that it supports uploading of crash reports uh, was immediately uh, dropped because uh, it is close to impossible to but get, it, it get certain like extensions in, into it our It seems like you could use CrashDB 
as the upload target, but have that file bugs for you? Would that be possible? Uh, yeah, but still, that that would be uh, something like like uh, uh, communicating or scripting Voxilla. It's it's yeah, it it would be possible. Um, in in uh, it is also planned to to add support for linking back to the CrashDB in in the Voxilla because that would be much easier. Mm -hmm. That you have your 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 report in Voxilla saying uh, there is a crash report for this bug existing in the in the crash database. So, but but that way, uh, I think uh, it was it was much easier to to come up uh, with a with a basic implementation than than to start uh, working with the Voxilla stuff. Uh, so. Yeah, but it, it is actually planned, and also what is uh, what else is planned is a notification. So we have a notification service uh, for the build service. Um, it's called Hermes, and uh, to connect this this uh, uploading um, or the the crash database with a notification service, so that the responsible developer gets a notification about the application crash. Um, yeah, that's. Will be to to annoy them. <laughs> no. So how does it work? Um, technically speaking, it's a it's a kernel patch which is uh, existing in the upstream kernel since I don't know when. Um, it's a core pattern, uh, or it, it's it's uh, introducing a, a, a syscontrol uh, called core pattern. Where you can write in, um, use, or it was intended to write in a special uh, format of the core file name, um, but Andy Clean extended it uh, to to have support for piping into an application. So what what is uh, actually done instead of writing the core to, to disk, uh, the the uh, kernel pipes uh, the core dump uh, into the upward application itself, and gives them uh, process ID. And uh, and uh, core size limit and such things. Um, so what Upport is then doing? It's writing um, the the crash report out to disk. Uh, here you can see it's usually under var crash, and uh, this is how the the file name is set up. Is it's uh, the name of the binary, the the user ID uh, of the of uh, the the. The app, uh, of the application that that uh, was running under which a user ID, and um, yeah, and then there it's picked up by the by the notification applets. Here it, that is support uh, uh, um, uh, supported by the GNOME settings daemon. So um, uh, it's a patch just to uh, file uh, to monitor a directory, and um, and for for KDE it's a module for KDE daemon. Yeah. You use uh, a an, an unique ID for the files because in the use case I'm thinking we, when you go on with your computer for maybe one month without access to a network, I'm sure you will end up squashing crash reports. Yeah. Um, the the interesting thing is um, the there there is a coin drop. Which is uh, removing crash reports after uh, that are older than one week. So uh, at the moment, it's expected that you that you send uh, uh, the report uh, in in this time. Um, and after after that, you can always download the the raw report how how it was sent upstream um, uh, from the from the database server. But uh, this file uh, uh, name format is also used to detect uh, duplicates. So when your compass or your pigeon is crashing, constantly crashing all the time, you don't want to fill the disk by 100 uh, uh, duplicate reports. So that are all named in a different way. So this is this was, I think, the simplest way to do that. But th that's how how it's done uh, in Ubuntu and in Fedora as well. So. I think we stick to the to the naming um, as uh, in OpenSUSE as well. So, but yeah, it would be an idea to extend that, or, or at least to configure, make it possible to configure that. But uh, you, at the moment, it's not. You could use a un unique name for the file, then in the first line have that same information. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So. Huh? A question? Oh. Yeah. 
Dr. Conky, ja. Yeah. Um, no, uh, it's, it's quite easy. The, the desktop specific application in crash handlers uh, are hooking into the, the uh, Segfault handler. So actually, that application are never segfaulting anymore. Therefore, airport is not getting called. It's very simple. So you can, but you can disable the desktop specific crash handler, um, and then uh, use airport. So I extended, but but I, th I think I I have uh, a fall about that later. I extended um, the the upwards um, or this step uh, to be more flexible for OpenSUSE uh, because I uh, know that the KDE project is very proud of Dr. Conkey. So <laughs> uh, I, I made it possible that you can call Dr. Conkey from, from your crashing application handler as well. So uh, that would enable us to disable the the um, the the stuff in the in the KDE applications, but still have the the intention or the the user experience would stay the same because uh, Dr. Conkey is called as well. So it's it's very very fle flexible and it integrates uh, quite good into into uh, GNOME and uh, Google Breakpad and whatever. So and yeah. And it's very good because at the moment the OpenSUSE, uh, the, the GNOME breakpad implementation is broken for OpenSUSE, so it's segfaulting uh, uh, itself. So, but I can I can get the the reports uh, of the segfaulting crash handler of, uh, of GNOME. I can capture them and report them as well. So, the, at the moment it's good to have it. Yeah. Um, what technologies are used? As I said, it's uh, the the uh, core pattern feature, which is upstream since 2624, the piping stuff, uh, the linker features uh, with the build IDs, it's basically a, a toolchain feature, uh, which is new in OpenSUSE 11.1, um, the compiler features about the asynchronous unwind tables to be able to produce uh, 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 or to stable, uh, to correctly produce a backtrace without having debug info. Uh, or without having full debug info. And system management features are, uh, you need libzip bindings for Python, um, which are only available on 11.1 because the libzip bindings for 11.0 uh, uh, are broken and nobody wants to fix them. So what's in there for developers? As I said, it's very flexible. So you can add your own hooks to it that are called during the applet. Uh, so when you, when you click the report uh, problem button, it's starting all these hooks and collecting, ga gathering data. So you can easily hook in there uh, just by adding another file into it. So uh, it's searching for, um, for uh, or it's actually executing all the, the Python files which are there. Then uh, you can also do that per package, so um, package-specific hooks. Um, and all these hooks need to implement uh, an add info function, um, which is then adding certain information to the report. It's also possible to delete certain information from the report. So uh, yeah, all the hooks are, uh, are, are very powerful there. You can execute arbitrary Python code. So this is how it looks. Um, this is a, a, a example uh, hook. This is uh, uh, an, an Ubuntu example. You just define uh, add info, and then you can you can uh, just uh, make a new key to in, in in this uh, in in your report and and uh, pipe the information there. So this is this is adding. A lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, files. Here's another example. Um, this is quite interesting because by this you can disable the 
uh, report generation or the s sending of the report upstream uh, if you detect certain uh, certain things. Um, this is uh, this is looking for for uh, specific uh, or um, specific things in the backtrace, and if it shows up in the backtrace, it says, "Oh, uh, your, your the crash report uh, is is uh, likely uh, uh, that it's invalid." So um, it's an unreportable reason uh, 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 bug report, and uh, you are not able to send them upstream or to the server. So then there's something which is uh, unique to OpenSUSE. It's the developer mode. Um, you can enable it by, by just putting a, a, a in the config file uh, developer mode uh, and just enabling it uh, in the config file. Uh, this is generating backtraces or uh, crash reports also for unpackaged uh, applications. That means uh, applications that are not officially signed by by um, by uh, OpenSUSE build key, and also applications like uh, my Segfault uh, application, which is not coming with the package, and so the package the system the uh, the packaging system doesn't know of it. Um, here you can see also uh, this unreportable reason tag. This is not a genuine uh, uh, SUSE package, and then you cannot send the report upstream, but you can save it. So, um, and then you can look at it or, or do whatever uh, uh, you want for it. So, this is uh, another thing which is unique uh, uh, this, uh, to, to OpenSUSE upport version. Um, uh, it's on app crash invoke uh, uh, environment variable. So, if the application itself has the uh, environment variable set while it's crashing, um, Upport will call um, the, the, the crash handler, which is defined here. So here you can see it was this application crashed in, and it had set uh, a path um, or a, a file name. Here it was uh, invoke.sh. It's just a shell script, so you can run arbitrary code there. Um, here can, you can also see the security feature. So my username is of, of course not username, but it was replaced. And um, so th this thing was then run, and here you can see it's just the output of uh, the the thing uh, of the thing that you are running is just attached to the to the application report. So by by that means it's very easy. Uh, to 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 add other uh, um, uh, crash reporting handlers or so on uh, in that case. So uh, when I say it's unique to the OpenSUSE version, that's just because I wasn't able to uh, to push this upstream uh, yet. Um, I'm working quite, uh, uh, the c collaboration with Ubuntu, with Martin Pitt, is uh, quite good. So it's, it's, uh, uh, he's taking patches from us as well, but, but uh, of course he wants me to prepare the patch and not, not uh, uh, tell him where the branch is and, and uh, let him do the merging work. So, but this will be upstream, I hope, in a few weeks or so. So, a list of missing features. It's quite long. <laughs> um, so, the proper integration with BugBuddy, Dr. Conky, and Kernel Oops. Um, that is also the, the problem is I'm uh, since I'm only using GNOME, um, uh, that would be the easier part. But somebody should should do the KDE uh, stuff. I hope that I can find somebody in house uh, probably or somebody in the community. And then um, a rewrite of the core application, so which is uh, located under user SHA uh, airport, um, airport. So so this is the application that is run by the kernel. I really want it to be, to have minimal requirements. And uh, I think that the Python requirement at that Point is not very optimal, so I want to report. I want to rewrite at least that part in in C probably, or in C plus plus. I don't know. And then something disable 
upload per process. Yeah? yeah. I have a question about when you mean rewriting, you mean rewriting as an executable again? Or the as what? a library? No, uh, as a standalone application, but that the application which is called from the kernel. So the initial gathering of the, the, the initial report gathering, which is very, it's, it's, uh, it's very uh, uh, simple work. It's only doing writing out the core dump and doing all this proc file. Uh, uh, well. That's exactly the opposite of what Windows does. In the Windows world, when you crash the application, what you are doing is you linked a static library because when your application is crashing, it might, it might be very well because your system is unstable due to hardware or memory, and the last thing you want to do is to start something new. You want to run something that you already have in memory. Uh, no, no, it's the, the, the interesting thing is this is in a separate address space. So it's, it's not starting uh, it's not like the segfault handling implementation or segfault handler implementation. You start a port, which is a new application. Right. Yeah. So if my problem was I was r running out of memory and that was the reason I was right. crashing, you are making things worse, not oh. better. Yeah, but the the Python, you know, the, the, you have to die one uh, one death uh, in no, that case. No, I that mean case. when you rewrite that in C, if it will make sense to for it to be a, yeah. a library, yeah, a yeah. static library. Yeah, probably. So, but I don't want to link it uh, or have it loaded multiple times. Uh, and or, or uh, if you if you have it loaded as a library, you and you don't want to run another application during crash, then I have to be sure that the code of the library, uh, uh, the, the the text. Uh, is not not modified during the application crash, so I really want to run in a separate address space. So mm. it it makes sense to start to start another application in that terms because the, the this is the the worst problem that you have with uh, Dr. Conkey and Bug Buddy is if the application goes crazy, they it's not able to start the segfault handler anymore, or even the segfault handler is, is is crashing and dying then. So, and you and to get this right is very very complex. So, what you can do is you you map the the part of the code uh, that you need to run during the crash. You lock it and you map it read only. Uh, um, uh, no, uh, not uh, read only, so that it's not. Uh, touchable by the application itself, but that that would be a lot of hacking, uh, and, and uh, for for a really small benefit, I think. Well, that's exactly what the Windows world does. Huh? That's exactly what the Windows world has been doing for 20 yeah. years. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, there are some other things that, that are missing, at least also on the crash report database. So, as I told, connection to Novel Bacilla, automatic report analysis. So, so I, I'm currently working on the uh, report analysis and uh, the, the report uh, retracer. Yeah, so that's it. The, uh, there are some people involved, Nikolai, uh, who did the initial report. Martin for merging for, for, uh, for merging our patches and uh, Andreas Bauer and Markus Rückert for helping me with Rails. <laughs> and uh, yeah, here's the, the wiki pages, Upport and Upport for developers. So if you're interested. Yeah. That's it. So questions? Anybody? <laughs> About the developer mode, um, you said uh, e if a package is uh, is some piece of software is now packaged by OpenSUSE, I mean signed by SUSE, um, it will be not reported unless you enable developer mode. Yeah. What if I develop some software, say commercial software, is not signed by SUSE, but I want it to have reporting features? So um, this is uh, the plan is. Uh, with the 
with a connection to the OpenSUSE build service that if uh, in the OpenSUSE build service has a bug, has a, a, a reporter set, no. uh, a, bug, uh, a bug ID set, that uh, our CrashDB server also accepts that, uh, uh, that report. Yeah. Uh, not an option. Hmm? Uh, software not built in the open, open yeah, source can, build service. You can always you can, uh, add, your, um, add your own crash database server. So that it is possible to have multiple servers. Yes, and but, then, yeah, but when in developer mode, uh, it doesn't send. It only saves. Yeah, you um, can, but you can, in, in, the, in the hook, uh, you can overwrite all this stuff so okay. in a package hook. So it's, that's possible. You have to finish now, sorry. Security wants us to leave the room now, so okay. finish your discussion outside. Good. Okay, thanks.